Today's topic is breaking down the Third Legion's design and law. Ooh, sexy. Huh? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Wait Pain. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. Unlike our previous discussion with the Second Legion, this one actually exists. Unless you're the common citizen, and then no, it does not exist at all, Inquisitor. Why do you say that? Well, let's get into it. You might have noticed that Cal skipped a pretty big part of the law there because we're actually going to be focusing on the design rather than the law part. We're coming at this from a broad angle rather than a very specific angle. Because good design is all about how something reads instantly rather than how it reads deeply. So what are we covering today? Pre-heresy design, post-heresy design, and redesign. Is that it? No, there's more. Within pre- and post-heresy design, we'll be covering design breakdown, design analysis, design versus law, art, and then final notes. Let's do it. Pre-heresy pre design. design. All right, Sonny, this is a standard Emperor's Children line marine from the pre-heresy era. Okay, right off the bat, I can see something that's quite obvious that I have not noticed in the previous legions is that they seem to have a bit more of a satin metallic finish, mm -hmm. which gives them a bit of that a regal aspect to it, I would say. And they also tend to have less elements as compared to some of the other legions paired with some a lot of these fancier gold trims like the I think that's yeah the aquila in the center of the chest is much larger they've got the eye on the pauldron and something that looks like a wing on the other side which is also gold not too sure what the little bobbles are meant to be but it's a very clean and streamlined design as compared to the other legions. Okay. What Two about... more points. Okay. Yeah. So the leather cuirass that's between the legs, that actually looks a bit stylish with how there's bubbles at the tips of it. Mm -hmm. And also something that's very unique. I see two skulls on the hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have not seen that before with the other legions. So that's quite interesting. All right. Should we get into the color theory or would you like to see the next picture of what is essentially a captain for them? I kind of want to see the captain. Okay. And this is their captain. He looks a little bit more menacing with that sort of very sharp like design of the gold mask that he has going on. This design is actually very symmetrical because of I'm not sure what that sort of crown. The plume. Yes. And also because it's sort of white, it gives it almost like a halo effect. On oh, him. Yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. I also noticed that he's got a lot more silver trim around the collar area, the pauldron area, and he has an eye around his belt. So mm -hmm. I'm not too sure what significance that is, but the middle cuirass it has a beautiful artwork on it, but it also has a very strong element to it because of the black and white colors. It's very menacing as well. Mm -hmm. I think they're called a tabard when they're like that. Oh, okay. I know they've got a lot of little silly names for these sorts of yeah, things. But but yeah, he definitely looks way more menacing as compared to the previous guy. But that makes sense since he's a captain. Okay, now can we get into the color theory? Okay. Design, Design analysis. analysis. Okay, let's go over the colors that are presented and what they mean. For the colors, there's actually two parts to this. As I mentioned previously, there's a lot of metallic elements or metallic like sheen shown in this. So we're going to talk about how the color and the metallic sheen affects the way they look. So we have a lot of silver, we have gold, and we have purple. I'm going to actually yeah. disagree with you on oh, the yeah? silver part because I would say it's a much more iron color. Really? Because it's quite bright. It is quite bright, but it's quite neutral and dark in the shaded areas. Mm. So I believe that they're trying to show a more neutral steel look rather than a high you know, um, silver, high reflection yeah. type of thing. Okay, sure. Let's call it iron slash steel. And then we've got the gold and the purple. So gold and purple combination, classic regal combination. So it's exactly like royalty. And the steel slash silver gives a sense of reliability and strength, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, before we go on, I think that we should break down each of the individual elements when it comes to the colors and what we're talking about. Let's do our basic breakdown of each of the colors. So first off, let's start with purple. Color profile. Royalty, rarity, mystery, magic, spirituality. Positive traits. Unique, creative, individualistic, empathic, and sophisticated. Negative traits. Sensitive, arrogant, paranoid, idealistic, emotional. Gold's color profile. Wealth, 
Power, privilege, prestige, and prosperity. Positive traits. Confident, success, optimistic, certain, charisma. Negative traits. Heartless, uncaring, dispassionate, untrusting, and soulless. Additionally, one of the things we discussed when talking about colour psychology, which is... Design language. Which is something we researched ourselves, so it doesn't have a strong research backing, but from our research, it seemed to make a lot of sense. The higher the reflectiveness profile of a metal, the more it's associated with hope. And the future and futurism. The reason I bring this up is one of the first things that Sunny noticed was their reflectiveness value. Shall we move on to shape design? Sure, but all of this is going to be really important a minute or two from now and they'll see why soon. Okay, Sunny, can you talk about each of their shape designs? For the lineman, he's more streamlined and simple, which makes sense because he's just a standard soldier. But for the captain, he actually sports a lot more paneling and rivets, which shows a lot more sturdiness because square shapes represent sturdiness, strength. However, I feel like every time we talk about shape design, it doesn't have as much impact because they're all space marines and they all have a very similar shape. That's is true, yeah. Okay, and finally, I'm showing you some other alternative designs in case when you look at them, you go, no, no, that, that doesn't make any sense or like that's very different sort of thing. Well, I would say the Primaris is most different from all these other four designs. He does kind of look like a Primaris, but I don't think that is a Primaris. That's just an old school space marine. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I would say he's the most different just because color profile wise, he has a much more vibrant purple and less on the metallic sheen as well, so it's more matte. Mm -hmm. And he also is very, very simplified. And I think that's just how the new Space Marine designs are. The Primaris, yeah. Yeah, the Primaris ones. The old pre-heresy design tend to be more um, grand, I would say. Mm -hmm. So the other one that's a little bit odd and different is the one with a lot of round shapes and bubbles. It gives a little bit of a childlike effect to it because round shapes are related to more flexibility and, you know, childlike essence in that sense. Would you say that looking at any of these, would you change any of your overall opinions on what you've seen thus far? Although there are some variants, they all pretty much look similar to each other. So no. Shall we go on to the next section then? Yes. Design Design versus versus law. Okay, based off their design elements, I would like you to guess what their law is about. Well, based on everything that we've discussed, I would say, one, by the name, Emperor's Children, I would actually think that they are the most favoured legion out of all the legions, the one that's closest to the Emperor, so they would share the most likeness to the Emperor. And based off their design... What do you think their character is like? Very arrogant. They must think very highly of themselves and they take a lot of pride knowing that they are the Emperor's children because as far as all the Primarchs and Legions go, they are all the Emperor's children. But why is it that they have to name themselves the Emperor's children? Believe it or not, folks, she doesn't actually know a lot about the law, so how do you think she did? (laughs) So one of the reasons they have the name of the Emperor's children during the Unification War, what happened was this. The noble families that resisted the Emperor as penance gave their firstborn sons to the Emperor for his legions. And they were all recruited into... The Emperor's children. So a lot of their first assignments, because they were so few in number, was actually as officers not for other space marines, but standard human armies of the Emperor. And as luck would have it, their gene stocks were affected by a virus, which was not an accident at all. Let's put it that way. So they were quite few in number throughout almost all of the Great Crusade. Hearing that, was I right about their level of pride? Oh, oh, you have no idea. So they were quite possibly one of the most prideful of all of the legions. In fact, That's what led to their downfall, but we might be getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Their obsession with perfection led them to be the first of all of the numbered legions to fall to chaos. Would you say that also made them the most competent legion? Oh, that's a hard question and we'll get a lot of uh, fights in the comments, but I would say for their numbers, they were extremely effective. Makes a lot of sense then. So, Sunny, does their design 
fit their law from what you've heard. Yes, I would say 100% it matches to a T. Looking at the color profile as well as the textures used and the gaudiness of the design, it matches everything that the law has stated about them. So when you're talking about the colors, you're talking about how purple is associated with royalty and rarity and mystery and how it's also got the positive traits of being unique and creative and individualistic. Also empathic because they were actually the emissaries for the emperor a lot of the time, the uh, ambassador. Right, and they were also very arrogant and sensitive to all of these things, and they tended to be a lot idealistic as well. Yes, very idealistic. Uh, perfectionist would be a way of saying that. Yes, exactly. And that's just the purple traits. As for the gold, privilege and prestige really come through, as well as showing a lot of confidence, being success-oriented, and very certain with everything that they do. And, they and being very charismatic. Exactly. And how about the negative traits for gold? Oh, yes. Uh, they are heartless. They are very... Uncaring? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I'd say that they care a lot about things. About other people. Okay, you got me there. Untrusting? Yeah, I'd say it's much of a muchness with the uncaring thing, isn't it? How about soulless? We're not at post-heresy just yet. Okay, should we look at some art? Let's do it. Pre-heresy pre -heresy art. art. Unfortunately, a lot of the art for pre-heresy Emperor's Children features Fulgrim a lot. And we want to focus on the Legion, not on Fulgrim, but he is obviously front and centre. So with that in mind, can we get you commentary? So, with this one, as you mentioned, Fulgrim is front and center. He's got his white hair blowing in the wind, and he has his hand outstretched to receive what looks like a golden eagle. And looking at that right off the bat, it gives a feeling that he is the champion, the champion of the emperor coming forth, reaching his hand out into the future. But it's also as if the emperor has come forth in a hawk-like or eagle-like form, to pull his hand towards the future, towards whatever it is he envisions the Imperium to be. Would you say with this artwork it very much represents what they are in the law? Yes, I would say that. Okay, this is perhaps the other most famous artwork of the Emperor's Children pre-heresy. What does it tell you? Well, I think this one really emphasizes their ideas of perfection because look how straight everyone is in their formations. So this really shows that part of them off. Mm -hmm. Anything else then? No, I don't think so. Well, do you think that shows a matching with their law? Yeah, it definitely shows them matching with their law because it, like I said, it shows them being very perfect, very high standards. They hold very high standards for themselves. And that just shows how it is with this artwork. Okay, then let's go on to final, final notes. notes. The one thing that I was surprised about that you haven't brought up that much at all is how many Roman-esque elements they have to their design. Actually, I would have to agree with you on that. There is a lot of Romanesque designs on them, and I wonder why that is, especially with some of the previous legions. They do sport a little bit of the Roman design. Okay, all of the legions, I would say, sport it a little, but I would say, unless we're looking at the Ultramarines, which are the poster boys, these guys have the most Romanesque elements to them. Do you think it's because it's also related to how Imperial that... Uh, empire was. I think you might be right there, but also it might be something else that we're confusing that a lot of people do, which is Greek for Roman. Oh, okay. So is there anything to do with their history in relation to... Oh yeah, no, the Greeks and Romans are heavily connected, but what I'm saying is we might be confusing Greek elements for Roman elements. I mean, there's a lot of crossover there, so I'm not that much of a history buff to know the exact differences, but maybe that's where they're pulling some of their influence from. Right, okay, that makes sense. But it's interesting that this element is often ignored when it comes to the Emperor's children. Maybe because all the pre-heresy designs tend to have a bit of a Romanesque inspiration to it, but it could also be because of how overpowering that imperial grandeur comes through with that design. You mean the sort of nobility royalty elements? Sort yes, of exactly. Ah, okay. Yeah, that could definitely be it. I guess we should move on to post-heresy, but I guess in their case, it's uh, post-fall to chaos. Okay then. Post-heresy post -heresy design. design. 
Okay, Sonny, now this is what the post-heresy lineman looks like. Give us your thoughts. It looks completely different. Yeah. Way different. And, like, let's talk about the colors. It's black and, well, it's not really hot pink, but it's almost like a fleshy pink. I would say it's hot pink. But it's too pale to be a hot pink. Yeah, I think that might just be because this is a very old image, so maybe when they printed it, it didn't come out quite the color that they wanted. You follow what I'm saying? I see. Okay, so for reference sake, let's just call it hot pink. Yeah. There's so many patterning going on. You've got fire. You've got some sort of um, astrology symbol. I don't think it is an astrology symbol, but I don't know what that symbol is on the left leg. And then the... I don't think that's actually the battery pack anymore. The two little lens-like arms coming out from oh, the Oh, yeah, back. yeah. No, it is its power pack. Oh, okay. I don't know why it's designed that way, but it, it looks quite interesting and cool, but it's also very extravagant. But the thing that really catches my eye is that weird tentacle arm over there and the hair. It's not hair, but it looks like a high ponytail. It's like they transformed that uh, plume. A top knot. Yeah. yeah, they t- transformed that previous plume into this loud blue color and made it into a really high a ponytail essentially top knot. that's yeah, what they call oh they call it top knot yeah so he looks like something that came out of an adult store <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no oh dear oh okay <laughs> Let me recover for a moment. Is there anything else you want to say? Oh, no. Are you sure you recovered? Yeah, just, just come on. Okay, up. so the gun design, it seems to have this very strange-looking face on the golden part of it with a mouth that's extending down really mm-hmm, long. Mm-hmm. And that same design is on the right pauldron as well, which is very interesting. And that same sort of astrology symbol that I see on the left leg, it's also on the gun, which Mm -hmm. now gives me the impression that it's not just a random symbol for artistic purposes. It's almost like a symbol of someone else, Mm -hmm. like they've changed sides almost. Yeah. So not sure what's going on over there. All right, shall we move on to the next image? Yeah. Okay, so just like with last time with the Dark Angels, rather than showing you a captain, what I'm going to be showing you is a specialist trooper. Oh, is this a specialist trooper? Yes. Because, like, other than the weapon, he kind of looks a lot like the lineman. Yeah. With the design. Like, he also has that top knot, similar styled um, battery pack, just that it's not a lens. Mm -hmm. And the color scheme is also pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So I actually thought this was like a future rendition or like a improved rendition of the lineman's design. And I can see that that mouse design is still on the knee there. Mm-hmm. So it's quite interesting. This this time the eyes are lit up, but that weapon, it looks almost elven-like or Eldari-like. Oh, why would you say that? I don't know. I think it's the way that it's shaped. And now the taking a closer look, it even has a face on it. Yeah, At it the does. front. Yeah, because yeah, it doesn't look like any standard Imperium weapon. It certainly is not a standard Imperial weapon, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely Xenos-looking. I will say Xenos-looking weapon. Ah, interesting, interesting. Yeah. That is definitely going to come up in the design versus law section. Okay, excited to see that. All right, is there anything else that you think you can say about this guy? Nope, I think that's all. Okay, Sonny, like before, what I'm showing you is some of the other new Emperor's children post-heresy so that people don't think that I am sort of... uh... Giving bias to just one type of design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, now that I'm looking at all four of these side by side, they look very monstrous. Yep. Which gives me the full picture that they have defected to chaos. Yes, yes. Well, we did mention that just yeah. before. Yes, okay. So, yeah, the guy that stands out to me the most is the one on the top left corner with the huge spiky jetpacks. Yeah, that's with- what's called a raptor. A raptor, yeah. So I I bet he's a flying guy. Yeah. And he's got a lot of spikes, huge claws, and... Something that tells me about this whole design is something that's really loud, very flamboyant in your face. Yes. Yes. So I'm guessing that perhaps also considering the color scheme, they might be part of Slanesh's team. Yes, yes, they are. They these are these are the team that fell to Slanesh. Team. Legion. Team, Le- team Slanesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else that you want to comment on any of them? There's something that caught my eye. Yeah. You see the guy on the bottom left? 
Yep. yep. He's got some tie garters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ultimate, notice that. The ultimate symbol of degeneracy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, and, yeah. and I think this image over here is actually their sort of new updated version of the lineman. Ah, oh, yeah. I actually kind of like that one, like, to represent someone who's fallen to chaos more just because of the horns and the extremely spiky weapons. Mm -hmm. And he's not too flamboyant to the point where he still kind of looks like a soldier, but yeah. more menacing, despite the color scheme and all the stuff going on. Unlike the other guys. The other guys have a more sort of extreme sexual feminine quality. Yeah, well, the reason why I wanted to show you that first one is because it's iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like that picture of Fulgrim, like, Everybody sort of knows that piece of art yeah. if they know about this stuff at all. Okay, before we do the design analysis, let's just pick out some of those things. For example, there's, what What did you say? Hot a pink. Yes, a lot of hot pink. But I think it could maybe be a different color profile. Maybe magenta. Yeah, magenta fits pretty well with this one as well. Yeah, at least the color psychology, I think, fits a lot better. Um, and then there's a lot of black and a some... few splashes of teal. Yep, yep. Yeah, with the plumage mostly. Yep, and then there's the mouth element that you were talking about a lot. Yeah, okay, there's something I want to point out about the mouths, right? Yep. So I noticed that in the Emperor's armor design, he also has that sort of awning mouth. And his knees. Yeah. So yeah. I'm wondering that's like a bit of a nod back to his design. Well, let's let's save that for the design analysis. Okay, sure. And that weird astrology symbol as yep, well. Yep. I think it does fit the theme of, you know, teal and magenta's psychology there as well, because it has a lot to do with spirituality. Their armor is also very spiky, which gives it a bit of a torturous element. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's a bit more organic? Yeah, I would definitely say it's very organic. All right, and is there anything else you can think of with these designs that you would pick out before we go into the design analysis? I think that's about it. Design, design analysis. analysis. Let's talk about the color psychology or design language behind them. So first, what are the colors? Magenta, black, and teal. Technically, it's pink, and we'll go a bit into that and why I think magenta might fit a bit more, but... We'll get into it. So pink is what is known as an associated color because it is not a secondary nor a tertiary color and it's associated primarily with red. Yes, and it's seen as a more gentle version of red, less harsh. Well, at the moment it is, but remember that culturally pink has shifted a lot. Pink used to be the color for boys seen as the immature color of red which is the color that was more for men yes and then now in the you know in the future it is seen as the color for the feminine yes uh for girls for women rather than as sort of like uh building yourself up to red Right. Culture has a larger impact on associated colors as compared to perhaps primary or tertiary colors. Yeah, 100% it does. Like red has the strongest cross-cultural meanings, whereas pink has almost entirely cultural meanings. Yes, I would agree with that. However, the next color, black, has a lot of cross-cultural meanings. And some people might be surprised by that and some people get a little touchy about it. But let's get into it. Black color profile. Power. Mourning. Serious, intimidation, mystery, positive traits, elegance, seduction, sophistication, polite and discreet, negative traits, controlling, evil, loss, nothingness, despair. I think when we get into the design versus law part, I think that black is a great choice, but let's move on to the teal. Teal is part of the aqua family, and it's also a tertiary color. Tertiary colors don't usually have a strong color profile, but because teal is associated with aquas, which is relevant to water, it has a stronger association than most. And 
Teal is the dark aqua, which means it is linked with the sea and death. It's easier on the eyes, and it does have positive traits like spirituality and beauty, but it's also linked with chaos and death because of its link with the sea. Should I talk about magenta and its color profile now, or should we save that for the design versus law part? I think it's not a bad idea to start with that now. I feel like magenta is a great fit for Slanesh because it is the imaginary color. Would you like to explain that? Yes. So magenta is part of the color spectrum that we cannot see. So it's actually a gap that's filled between the purple and red. What Sunny means to say is there is no spectrum of light that is associated with magenta. Instead, it's our brain making the best approximation of what it thinks is there. And why this is really interesting is because it doesn't share any of its meanings with its parent colors of purple and red and instead gets a lot of its meanings from yellow. Yes, yellow is one of the hardest colors for our eyes to see because it's really harsh and magenta shares that property. Yes, in fact it has some of its meanings like impatient, careless and domineering. Magenta also has cultural meanings. For example, in East Asian culture, it is seen as the color of harmony. And in house design, it's often seen as warm and welcoming. So you can see there's a lot of wiggle room with magenta. Except with magenta, because it's still a pretty harsh color, like with yellow, that's a biological response. Yeah, you're right. And so the associations of impatience, carelessness, and domineering will be the default meanings for magenta rather than the specific color cultural meanings like warm, welcoming, and harmony. Yeah, you're right. Okay, can you tell us a little about the shape language and what it says when it comes to these designs? There's a lot of triangular aspects with the sharps and points, which yep. actually shows a dangerous element with it because, like I mentioned, it's a hostile shape. Mm -hmm. It also represents unpredictability because of the slants in the shape itself. So that would be a great way to show a villainous character. Okay. Okay, is there anything that we should know about the more organic aspects? Because a lot of these elements are blended into the armor designs. Uh, yes, but a lot of what I'm going to have to say will be covered in the design versus law part. Well, do you think we should be moving on to it then? Yes. Design, design versus, versus law. law. The Emperor's children defected to chaos. This we already know. But the reason why they did is because they met this alien species. Remember how you were talking about the Xenos mm -hmm. technology? They are called the Leia. Oh. And then they started incorporating some of their ideas. Oh, that makes a lot of sense with the weapon design change then. Mm -hmm. This ultimately ended in a play called the Maraviglia. And it's, it's a whole story, but... That's how they fell to chaos. And a lot of the Slaneshi design is all around sound. That's why they've got the screaming faces. Oh, okay. Is that also why there are some... I know we didn't talk about this, but the... Oh, what are they called? The... Uh, noise Marines? Oh, yeah. The Noise Marines. That's one. Yeah. I really wanted people to be able to see your face just then because when I was telling you these things, your face lit up and you're like, oh, 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 yes. The yes, thing, it's, the thing. It's all <laughs> making sense now. So I figure let's work backwards a bit and I'm going to say, do you think their design fits their law from what I'm already telling you, just these bare bones now. 100%. Okay, let's go back to the organic shapes. Music is always represented as a flow of sound, right? Mm -hmm. So the organic shapes totally make sense with like sound moving through things, spikiness because obviously it's hostile, it's chaos. They have to show some sort of a villainous aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Black is a very powerful color. It's also something that represents evil and seduction. Paired with the magenta e type of pink color. Yeah, the hot pink, I think. Let's just call it hot pink. Let's call it hot pink. It's a very loud, attention-grabbing color. Again, keyword, loud. So mm -hmm. that matches up with that sound theory again. And also it gives that, again, that sexual vibe with all these other elements that they have incorporated. Like the garter. The garters, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
also when it comes to the psychology part i can understand why you chose magenta because this whole design just screams domineering i'm going to talk about some parts which actually fit more in the redesign section but i think it fits here so that raptor had a magenta design but i think magenta's a better fit for them overall than the hot pink yeah i, I would agree with that actually but it's not so much of a significant change that i think that it's like worth a total redesign yeah I, I would so, say so i'm just saying like yeah that fits better but it's not massive and like they already have it on some things but i do think that the weakest part of them is actually the slaneshi part and the reason i say that right is because i think slanesh is actually designed very poorly as a bit of a historical holdover so the idea of slanesh was very sort of connected with sex drugs and rock and roll mm -hmm. however slanesh is about excess and and excess isn't just, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll. There's a lot of ways to become depraved with perfectly normal things. It's about obsession, right? Would you yeah, say? yeah. But I mean, like, take a look at, for example, gluttony, right? Eating to the point where you're grossly obese. I would have to disagree and agree with you there. Okay. As, a, as a concept, you are totally right. But from a practical standpoint... The law is set up in such a way that the way it Slanesh was given rise to or all the other types of races, for example, Eldari that has fallen to Slanesh has been through the specific acts of like access through sex and drugs and art. And murder, yes. And murder. So if it would be like a total law overhaul if we were to you well, know, go see, in a different direction. I don't direction. think it is a law overhaul. I think that the problem is that uh, a lot of that is in essence sexy like that sounds cool but a lot of excess right a lot of when it comes to people doing too much of something it isn't cool it isn't fun it's just like oh no it's gross yeah yeah right, okay do you know the movie seven no well i'm not sure you can actually watch it here's one of our uh, little secrets sunny can't watch certain movies we sort of is it, bend is, them from is her. it a ghost movie no it's not a ghost movie it's just uh very graphic images oh, perhaps i can't stomach it <laughs> yeah but in that there's a lot of people who are killed with each of the seven deadly sins oh. And see, the thing is, when you see how these people die, you're not like, oh, yeah, you're like, oh, I, I feel like I need to wash myself. Yeah, it's an extreme sense of discomfort and, yeah, grotesqueness. Which I think is a good point to move on to the art, because I think you're going to feel that with this first one. Art. art. So, Sunny. This... I see. Yeah, <laughs> you mean you see what I meant about the excess yeah. thing? Okay, I would like to make a slight comparison when we talked about the grotesque thing, right? Yeah, yeah. When you said grotesque, I was like, hmm, but that's already taken up by Nurgle. Yeah. Right? But how this is different from Nurgle is that you don't see any boils or anything like that. But there's that access in the way that his armor is designed. Look at how many things there are on his armor. Yeah, I, I more look at his face. Yeah, and his and face. The bug eyes and the and like all of what, it. Whatever happening with the mouth there, yeah. right? Like it's creepy crawly. But it's not disgusting in a plague way. This is a different form of disgust, I would I, I'd say. I'd say it has a similar sort of level of disgust, but I think that comes from the sort of insectile appearance. Like, yeah. he almost looks like an insect. He here. does, he does. So, like, your skin is warped and... Well, not re a little bit like it looks like it's melting. Yeah, no, it, it looks more, to me, stretched. Yes, stretched. Yes, and uh, look at the background, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how many things are going on in the background. I think that's actually the warp. Yeah, He's I'd coming say out that's from the a warp. good chance. That's yeah, going so on. this really expresses that excess. There's way too many things going on. Your eyes doesn't know where to look, what to do. It just makes you feel so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think this really portrays what you were talking about in terms of concept. Excess doesn't necessarily have to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, there is a sex aspect to it there because it's both male and female with you know the breasts there but I do think that the one thing that is different right is it's almost androgynous at the same time and like it's almost as if like that's a second thought and like that it means nothing it's just like yeah, yeah. like I do what I want you know yeah. it's, it's kind of the concept of alchemy and the rebus there right oh yeah 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 but I know that has a completely different very specific purpose why the rebus was you know to 
to be created. Yeah, I think the rebus is more connected to that Greek idea of the perfect human was four arms and like it was both man and、uh, sorry, both man and woman, and like they were connected together, and the gods split them apart. I think that's more the rebus idea. And this sort of just、uh, I I I could be whatever the heck I want, my man. I could. Yeah,、be. it's. I, I don't even think it's that. I think it's just like crank the senses up to a million, not、yeah. not to like eleven. Just like because he doesn't even have ears anymore. Oh yeah, he doesn't have any ears. And like he doesn't have a mouth because he wants to scream even louder. Oh, is that why it's shaped the way that? It yeah, is? yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was because like he wants to devour things or something. Yeah, well, I guess you've got that insectile sort of、uh, mandible there mm, as well. Mm, mm. I think we have picked apart this particular artwork more than the others. Yeah. Okay. All right. But there's a reason why I think it's so iconic and why people are so drawn to it. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, it's a mini. Yeah, it is a mini, and there's a reason I wanted to show this to you because I felt if I didn't show this to you, I'd be missing out on something really important when it comes to the emperor's children. Right, and because this is a very iconic. Yes,、miniature. it is very iconic. It's a celebration miniature, as far as I remember. But this is sort of how they wanted to show off noise marines, and one of the things that I wanted to point out is this is what I was talking about—the more sanitized version. I I would agree with that. Definitely more sanitized. It's got a very obvious rock and roll vibe, you yeah, know, yeah, with the、yeah. huge guitar, bright red fire、uh, guitar, and then it's got cheetah prints. Yeah. It's got zebra prints. Yeah. Rainbow color hair. You know, horseshoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like they're platform shoes. Yeah, platform shoes, but they do look like horse hooves. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, so it's very rock and roll, and I would say that it's. Sort of the fun version of these guys, and see that's one of the points that I wanted to make. See, when it comes to our redesign, remember when we redesigned the Second Legion? I think one of the key things that people like is we treated it seriously,、mm -hmm. and this is why I wanted to show you this as one of the potential concepts, right?、Mm. Because I think when we've got to consider the idea of a redesign, we've got to consider it from the idea of the company because. That's the whole idea, which will lead us on to final, final notes. So here's one of the big things that I wanted to talk about with the design versus law part. I feel like yeah, you were right in that they 100% fit the law and the law presented, and you were talking about how the Eldar fell. Slanesh as a god of excess has a very narrow scope. I don't understand what you mean. So let's take a look at how the Eldar fell. Right, it was yeah, through yeah. drugs. Sorry, not drugs. Murder, art, and sex specifically. It was not like excess of gluttony, excess of laziness. Oh, okay. So it, there are so many other sins that they could fall to, or a combination of all these. Oh, just yeah, not necessarily、specific. sins. You're just saying there's a lot of ways that excess can go, but they really focused in on those things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So、okay. in that. Retrospect, I think that the Third Legion's design definitely covers all these points. And in that, I agree with you. But I think that Slanesh should have a broader range of things, which I think I can really only talk about when we get to redesign. redesign. It's important to treat this as a brief from GW, so that we can come up with the best design that's most practical and looks good as well. What Sunny is trying to say is this: we have to present ideas that won't be accepted by you guys as law buffs, but as GW as a company trying to sell stuff. Yes. So this part's going to sound a little odd. But I don't actually think the Emperor's Children 30k or 40k need a redesign. Oh, good! This video is long enough as it is. Well, actually, there's more to it. What? I think that the Slanesh armies, or rather the Emperor's Children armies, need more options, new units to be released. So, what do you think they're missing out on? So, the Age of Sigma models have some of those gluttonous people representing the excess of Slanesh in other ways. However, I don't think that they should go the Heed Knights of Slanesh way. Instead, going a completely different direction. Now, we talked about how the movie Seven's representation of excess. Was pretty intense. I don't think that we can go that way if we were to present this as a brief to Games Workshop for 
one reason above all others: the religious aspect. Oh, okay. If you can avoid upsetting people as a company generally, it's a good idea. I can understand that and totally agree with that, but would also have to disagree considering how the dark angels are space Catholic design. Yes, but remember that they've been grandfathered in; they're not a new thing. Ah, okay, I understand now. Plus, there's already a theme that we can play with: the five senses. While we do have more than five senses. Is we've got electromagnetism, we've got the sense of balance, we've got all of this and that. We just want to go with something that is simple and clean. Yes, like I mentioned earlier, it's about the most readable and obvious design, not the most deep design that people need to figure out. So one of the designs I was thinking about was a marine that would mostly be crawling, and it's got eyes all over its body on its back. Now these can be organic or these can be mechanical eyes, and they're the sort of scout force for the emperor's children. That makes perfect sense. Now I know I may sound like an old man when I talk about. Heavy support, elite selections, and fast attack support, but this could fit within that fast attack profile and gives them some more depth of play. I can see how that ties in with the noise marines and the slanesh style, but it's not too excessive to the point that a company might not be able to produce it. Yeah, it's not too excessive. Ironic, right? Yeah. The next one would be called the devourers, and they would be both a mix of, of course. Taste and smell. So these would be some sort of elite style unit, which have a lot more wounds than usual. They'll be big and chunky, and what they'll have is some sort of or specs like ability. Or specs ability. Or specs is a sensor, and it allows you to detect things such as scouts and other things. So it makes sure that you're not surprised.、Mm, that makes sense. So they've got that smell. So that is what allows them to have that or specs like ability. How would we show this particular sense in excess? Okay, I would say maybe give some of the model heads like forked tongues sniffing the airs, but the biggest thing is much more that idea of taste, and they'll be big round models. Imagine basically instead of Nurgle plague marines, right? Imagine like the great clean one versions of the、mm. Nurgle plague marines. Okay, but obviously a little more spikier. Yeah, definitely need those spikes. Kind of like that big lizard from Monster Hunter World. You know the great Jargus. It looks like a big iguana. Yeah, it does. And finally, the last one would be called the Feelers or something like that. And what these would be is stretched out, skeletal, almost having shattered armor. So their role would be to fill out an unusual niche, to ignore toxic weapons, and to ignore bombardment. And the whole reason for that is because. These people crave sensation, right? And they've taken it to the extreme. Like they put their hands in acid and、oh, wow. all sorts of things like that, right? And they've put their pain tolerance to beyond imagination. I would say that truly expresses the Third Legion falling to Slanesh to put yourself through torture to experience pleasure. So as far as redesign goes, that's the only thing I could think of instead of redesigning anything about them because they all. Seem really solid. Yes, I actually feel the exact same way. I was like, "What are we going to talk about with the redesign? They're really perfect." But after hearing your thoughts on it, I would say that just adds that extra level of excess and makes it even more practical as an army. Yeah. Well, the big thing for me was like I was looking at it and I'm like. I guess use more magenta than hot pink, and I'm like, that's not really a redesign. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what you thought of this discussion and the redesign, and comment below if you agree and if you have any changes you'd make. Yeah, and one of the big things I would like to hear is, do you think that? This kind of idea is something that Games Workshop could consider or could possibly release in the future. That's important for me. Yeah, because we're trying to come at it from a design perspective. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, and as always, keep, keep those brushes, brushes wet. wet. Bye bye. <laughs>
Hey all, at the end of these things you know that we usually do a skit or something like that, however we want to promote something that we just opened last week, which is memberships. And the reason that we did that is because we want to make things. We are creators at heart, we don't want to just critique and review, we want to make things and add value. That's right, that's why we got somebody to make these STLs for us based off our own art for our game. The game's actually finished, but the current production of it is a bit of a hot mess. Let's just say, before Cal met me, he had worked with lots of artists and I'm sure they're nice people. Okay, yeah, they <laughs> they are nice people, but I, I do agree with Sunny. You only get one chance to make an impression and we want ours to last. We want you guys to have the best possible experience you can. So we're going to develop this with you. We're going to be introducing you to the game as members. But I do want to say thank you so much for the feedback on Second Legion Law. Yeah, it was incredible. You guys gave us perspectives that we didn't even think about. And we would love to have that same level of discussion in this video and perhaps the future Design versus Law videos as well. And we're actually going to be doing videos on those bits of community feedback. Thank you so much for joining us for this little adventure. And we hope to see you guys join us as members.